Hello, and welcome to Meet the Candidates, a show where we give residents an opportunity to learn more about candidates who are hopeful in representing them. My name is Candace Machat, and I'll be your host. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Claudia Perkins, Sixth Ward Council candidate. And just in hearing about some of the amazing uh, women that you say inspire you daily. And we know about some of the great things in Flint, right? And Flint is an amazing place. It's a great place. But as with there in the nation or anywhere in the world, you know, there are plenty of great places to make better. So in your opinion, what do you see Flint lacking? Oh, God. Well, I see Flint lacking, well, cleanliness. I've gone to other cities like uh, Lansing, Michigan, our state capital. I've gone to Canton, Ohio. It's so mm -hmm. clean, you could eat off the streets. Um, we need to clean our city up. It is unattractive, you know, and we need to be able to clean this place up so we can draw new business and draw people back into the city. That's major for me. The crime, of course, it, it goes without saying. And right there, Ms. Claudia, you actually hit on three of the areas that residents are telling us. We we went out and we talked to a few residents. So you hit on three of the areas that residents are telling us is a concern for them um, with the blight, the public safety and economic development. If you don't yes. mind telling us, and because we know we have to work on those things as a whole, right? Um, mm -hmm. But in the sixth war specifically, what's your plan to address blight, public safety and economic development? Okay, uh, as far as, uh, I think blight and economic development go hand in glove. If you clean up the city, you know, and I would partner with not only the mayor's office, but the blight department and with block clubs in the area and help to try and clean the area up. Give incentives within the uh, wards. There are nine wards and give incentives within the wards to, uh, you know, help clean each ward up uh, so that we can be attractive and drawing. Uh, you know, partner, there's, I talked with the mayor and I asked him about <clears throat> some of the, uh, there was a, a ordinance put together by Vera Risen, one of our late greats. That was another one for me. Uh, mm -hmm. And she uh, put a, a order together that says, if a house or structure burns down the owners before they got their insurance money, they would tear that structure down or, or whatever before they got the insurance money. And I wanted that enforced. The mayor says they take a part of that money and put it to the side. So there's a lot of money that's put up specifically for that, for cleanup. And so I'm looking to partner with him and, and work with him and the rest of my colleagues to help clean up the city of Flint. We need to do that. Um, uh, you said economic development. We need to draw more businesses into the city. And any way that I can do that, I know a lot of people because I've been a lot of places and I got a reach, a long reach. And I have people right now that have businesses that they want to put here in Flint. We're having trouble with the land bank. We need to get some of these empty buildings filled up. And there, I've gone to a lot of pop-up shops lately. And there's a lot of things we could do in some of these empty schools and that. And then I'd like to bring some of the schools back in the city of Flint. You know, our, our school system was decimated and we need to be about bringing those schools back. We had four major schools, Flint, Southwestern, Northwestern, and the great Northern High School. And uh, I wish that's my alma mater. <laughs> and uh, if we could get some schools back in, the city of Flint, we bring the children back and then that would bring the families back. And one of the things you are correct about is that at one point in time, the Flint community school system was a model for schools across the it country. Was. And I it will was. not hold you going to Northern against you. <laughs> so I was say, it's a Flint community school. So, okay, go Flint community school. That's right. But something else that you said at the beginning when you were talking, I think it's really important. And you were talking about how you were willing to work with the mayor's office uh, mm -hmm. to get these things done um, in the sixth ward. And so I'm yes. just wondering, what is your take on the uh, current council and the current administration's relationship? Do you think it should change? And if so, how are you committed to helping be that change? 
First of all, I think that we're all highly intelligent individuals. First, we need transparency. We need camaraderie. We need a clear understanding on why we're there. And we mm -hmm. first and foremost, in my take, is that we need a professional parliamentarian to run those meetings so that we won't be strapped with you're a racist or a uh, point of order or all this kind of crap all through the meeting. That takes away a lot of the time. Also, I would uh, ask that the packets that were given to the council were given early enough where we can read and understand what it is and have a decent meeting prior to the public meetings so that we would look professional. I can look back through time and space when Carl Bukowski was the president of the uh, council and people like Fred Tucker and Harold Hayden, people like that, uh, Matt Taylor. We had a good council. We had business being taken care of. Those are the kinds of things that I'm looking for. And I can reach around the whole uh, administration and work with anybody. And the rest of them need to get on board. That's where I'm at. All right. And so you talked about bringing in a parliamentarian, right? And so for yes. them to be, for them to come in and kind of help whip those meetings into shape and make sure that they're down to business and get in order, I'm sure after that they will be absolutely famished and ready to eat. So, Miss Claudia, right. where yeah. would you suggest for them to eat? Where, what, what's favorite restaurants in Flint? Well, you know what I like. Well, I like Applebee's. I like Red Lobster. I like uh, ATM Prime. Um, I like Sagano's. You know, mm -hmm. those are some of the ones that I actually go to. Okay. Oh, and lately. Okay. All right. So it sounds like they would have some good choices to uh, have some fine cuisine right around the Flint area for sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. Um, and, Don't and I'm let just, me forget yeah. Chips restaurant. Chips also. <laughs> oh, definitely cannot forget one of the community staples. <laughs> but yeah. one of the things that we know we're still waiting on here in Flint, right? Um, the nation, everyone knows that we went through this water crisis. And so yes. my, my question to you, 2015, a lot of the things that people ask from 2015 to 2021, here we are. The nation wants to know, is the Flint water crisis over? No, it is not. First of all, I am one of the original water warriors. I ran the Delphi plants and I watched a lot of pollution being uh, happening uh, from the General Motors and DuPont. They did their fair share of dumping. And I've always said, why were they not held accountable to help clean the Flint River up? That's one thing. Number two, we uh, had Legionnaires, a disease from the uh, the uh, water crisis. I have two friends. One is, well, I have one niece and one friend who had their legs amputated uh, that were in McLaren Hospital and are still sick and suffering behind this. I had a girlfriend that went to school with me to, to pass away, Odie Brown. I uh, <clears throat> I mean, I have fought in federal and Supreme Court. I've not missed one meeting. I've driven all the way with the Democracy Defense League from Flint to Ann Arbor and Lansing to fight for on behalf of the citizens of Flint. I've done that uh, to the point where I ended up in the New York Times in August because they did a featured story about us in the uh, water crisis. Um, you know, we are a consorted effort of the Democracy Defense League and we fight injustice all over the place. So we're in the thick of it as far as the water crisis goes. Now we are in federal and Supreme Court and I went behind Mayor Weaver, former Mayor Weaver, uh, in speaking about the water crisis in federal court with Judge Levy and Judge Farah. So, uh, you know, it, it was, interesting to say the least, but we are not out of the water crisis yet. And the holdup is the bone scan testing that uh, some of the attorneys are uh, challenging, you know. Um, but my attorney has said they had the same opportunities as the ones that had the uh, instrument to do the bone lead testing and they didn't do their due diligence for their clients. So now they're complaining. But anyway, it's being held up at that point, as far as I know. And so as a, not only as an advocate, right? Not only as a water warrior, but as a Flint resident, what would it, what would 
over, if you will, what would over look like for you to say that, you know what, as a Flint resident, um, I, I feel like uh, we've been made whole. We've been, you know, this is, this is fine. It's over. What would that look like? That would look like the Army Corps of Engineers coming in, making sure all the pipes were fixed, making sure all the infrastructure in everyone's homes was replaced because that bad water went through the hot water heater, excuse me, the ice maker in the refrigerator, the uh, washing machine. Those things need to be replaced. Um, our water is at the highest level in the nation. When they raised it illegally, no one has taken the time to adjust it and bring it back to where it should be. That mm -hmm. needs fixing. Um, anybody who has a deficit, especially with the uh, monies that have come in from President Biden, I think should uh, the ones that pay their bills should get credits. Uh, we should be made whole in all respects. And that's where I'm at. Okay. And, and nobody, many, and nobody, excuse me, nobody should be left out of the settlement. Nobody okay. that's been impacted well, you, by the war. And you answered my, my next question it was my, because my next question was, how should that settlement be divided? So you were already ahead of me on that next question of the fact that no well, one should well, be divided. Well, I mean, left out. Children. The right. Well. The, the attorneys are going to get their $200 million, which would leave $400 million. 60% of that would go to the children and the rest would go to everybody else. They, I don't like the fact that they put a cap of only, as I say, one, <coughs> excuse me, one appliance. The refrigerator alone could cost $1,000. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or more. And so I think that was an injustice also. And you talked about three of the things that residents are saying um, were really important to them when you talk about when you mentioned blight and you mentioned economic development and you mentioned public safety. Um, as far as public safety is concerned, specifically, what what is your specific plan for the sixth ward? Well, uh, right now I am uh, part of a team that got together with uh, my partner Audrey Young Muhammad, and uh, we are now officers in the city of Flint and we opened up four new mini police stations and I'm over at the Kettering office on uh, Mondays and Thursdays at nine o'clock. So that's where my office is. And we are duly sworn officers of uh, the mini police stations. Right, well, it sounds like, you know, you're so committed to public safety that you went and became an officer. So that is definitely admirable. I have one more question for you, though. Uh, well, just another question for you. Uh, if you were to go out there and as you're patrolling the streets, if uh, the cast of the last television show you were watching were patrol was patrolling the streets with you as well, who would be patrolling the streets of Flint with you? What was the last television show you watched? Uh, CSI. <laughs> well, see, that, that, that's a pretty good team, then. That is good team. <laughs> CSI. Yes, indeed. CSI. All right. All right. Yep. That's who it would be. <laughs> that's, the God, and that's a good team. <laughs> yes, that's a real good team. And I'd like someone like that to be working with me. But the police officers, uh, the uh, duly sworn police officers do come in and out of the facilities and uh, check on us and do their paperwork. And if there's anything that arises, they're in the area. And uh, we all we have to do is call them. Okay. Well, and, and I know that this is going to affect um, everyone in the city of Flint. And so this is one of the reasons why uh, residents do need to come out and they need to vote and they need to stay on top of, you know, what's going on and who is elected. Uh, voter That's turnout right. is usually pretty low unless it is a presidential election. So what's your plan to get voters to kind of turn out for city council? Well, I've been knocking on doors. I've put up yard signs. I have written uh, uh, letters. And this week I sent out over a thousand pieces of mail to my constituents uh, telling them some of the things that I'm doing. Currently, some of the things that I've done, what my plans are. And I plan to ride through the neighborhoods. I plan to set aside a certain portion of time for them to be able to come directly to me and speak to me and share with me. I intend to be a part of the block clubs, you know, all of those kinds of things I think would help in uh, 
you know, showing them the interest. If, if I show interest in them, they should show interest not only in me, but in themselves enough to come and, and you know, make it better for all of us. And I feel like you kind of just answered my last question, but I want to give you a chance to do so in fullness and totality. Look at that camera and let residents know why they should vote for Claudia Perkins, sixth ward council candidate. Okay. Uh, to the sixth ward, listen, we're all suffering from the same things. We're black economic development, uh, a poor school system, uh, just a uh, crime a whole litany of things. We all suffer with the same things, the drag racing. Uh, but listen, together we can. Together we can. We are a united front if we work together. I'm only one vote and one person. I can't do it by myself. But with you helping me, we can do it all. We can turn this place around. I remember a time when we had uh, on the North End especially, I want the North End to look like the downtown Flint area. And why can't it? It can if we come together and make it happen. I believe we can. I'll work with you to make that happen. I feel like I'm the best candidate for the job. I got to reach all the way to the White House. I got some cell phone numbers in my pocket that reach all the way that far. So if you allow me to represent you, I'll be a voice for you. I'm not bought, I'm not paid for by anybody, but I am my own woman. I'm a God-fearing woman, and I think I'm the best one for the job. All right. Well, thank you for that. We thank you for your time. Uh, once again, this was Ms. Claudia Perkins, Sixth Ward Council candidate. Thank you for having me. I am Reverend Lynn Jackson, pastor at Quinn Chapel AME Church, and I vote. Hey, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Candidates, our public forum where we allow uh, candidates to come here and let them know why they're running, who they're running for, and all that good jazz. So I'm your host tonight, Paul Herring Jr., or PJ for short, and tonight we have Mr. Richard Jones uh, running for council. Mr. Jones, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me here. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to get straight on into it, sir. Uh, the first question I have for you tonight is, who are you and uh, or who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself so the people can kind of get an idea. Well, I'm uh, born and raised in the city of Flint. Um, spent a few years living in Atlanta and Orlando. And... I wouldn't have made it in either, any one of those places if it wasn't for the value lessons that I learned here in Flint. And I learned a lot down there that I wanted to bring back to the city of Flint. And when I came back to Flint in 2014, it, 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 was, it, was, it was totally different than what it was when I left. And I have been visiting Flint, you know, off and on throughout my time away while I was living in Orlando. And so I gradually seen, seen the change and stuff coming. And when I came back into Flint, uh, I just, just, just kept bumping into warriors. 
And at the age of 19, I was a, a basketball coach and I uh, learned and learned and made a lot of money uh, in Atlanta and Florida because of ba off of basketball. So I had a lot of love for kids. And I and I noticed that our city was kind of forgetting about the kids and their decisions that they were making. Mm -hmm. Um and then from hanging around activists, I bumped into my homeboy and me and him went been kicking in there. That's Councilman Mays. And since then, you know, when this last uh uh current election came up. I felt it was time that the uh, people be heard because one of the uh, one of my friends asked me why was I even running for office, mm -hmm. and I told him just to you know put it straight. I'm saying the same thing that you would be saying if you was running yeah. for office, and it's about time that we be heard because I have been a persistent voice and 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 I have ever been a consistent uh, person at the uh, council meeting. So I've been hearing the citizens and I've been seeing the vote or uh, witnessing the votes. And a lot of times they vote to where they don't listen to what the people say. And recently the decisions that they have made had hempered a black company from the third ward from receiving a million dollars that they overwhelmingly earned. Um, where right now they presently think that giving Jefferson school some nail and some wood to keep people from going in there is good. I'm demanding that all they all put on $2 million into it, and it was a million. It, it keep going up the more they let people break into it because wood and nails only going to keep somebody out for an attempt or two. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm hearing, they're constantly attempting that. And that building needs programs in there, different nonprofit organizations. Uh, one of them should be uh, parenting to where we work with the fathers and the mothers and in the beginning of parenting um those are those all sound like good ideas um you, but I, I heard that you said you were away from flint for a little bit and then you came yeah. here, and then you ran into a bunch of like uh water warriors or is yeah. and things like that so that yeah. kind of leads it leads me into my next question of um who are some people from flint that inspire you um, uh, you know, we got a lot of people who have who've been on national platforms. So if there's anybody you can think of that, you know, who, who's touched your heart. Well, far as, uh, who touched my heart, uh, I watched a video, uh, today and it showed, uh, sister Muhammad, uh, giving somebody some, uh, so, uh, some bottled water uh, in 19, I mean, in 2000, and I think that was 18, 2018 or 19. And that 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 touched me. Uh, I listened to Reverend Thrill Carroll. He's, he's one of the few pastors that I consult with. Um, and um, I was basically, you know, raised through politics because I come through Christ Fellowship Church. Mm -hmm. Under, um, I was the, uh, I was the uh, one of the first members to join the church when our Reverend Rob, our Reverend Sheldon took over for Reverend Robs. And my cousin is Matthew Taylor. He uh, was a councilman of the Fifth Ward. Uh, my cousin presently is Brian Nolan. He's the county commissioner. Um, my family, my mama, my mama has always been in and been been informing me about what was going on as far as elections and stuff. And my grandma always made sure I have voted ever since I was 18 years old. So 
it was just, you know, naturally for me to, to get into it. And far as my um uh, my my recent uh people that I would I like to say, I would like to give another shout out to um uh, Miss Claire. Um because she is a real powerful woman and she lets me know when I'm wrong. And she lets me know when I need to slow down. And uh, my home front, my homeboy BG. Right now, he 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 inspires me by just not letting me. <laughs> he be like, "Man, what's wrong with your leg?" I be like, "Oh no," he be like, "Ain't nothing wrong with your leg." And right now, I'm barely standing up. You know, <laughs> right from going from going door to door. He like, "Rich man, you know you got to get that one zero zero." You know, so so and, and then oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it sounds like you got. A, there's a lot of Flintstones that you that who who've touched you and who who are uh, kind of in your corner is what I'm hearing. Yeah. All right, that's good. That's good. So, in your discussions with some of these people, have you guys ever talked about what do you think the city's lacking at all? Transparency. Okay. Um. Uh, one of the one of the conversations I just had with somebody I'm not gonna say their name, but uh, he was like he don't understand why uh, more of the city councilmen wasn't getting loud with me when I was hollering it's time to zero balance all of the people water account with this um with this uh forty seven point five million dollars. Um, I'm still shaking my head on that. Um, it's what the people want. I mean, you do get you do you get you do get your adversaries, which and I understand them because I feel that they should get sixty percent of their money that they pay back. But I don't feel that people that paid their water bill should look down on people that didn't pay their water bill because there I have discovered there's many different reasons why people didn't pay their water bill, and some of them is pure hardships. So anywhere it go. The water we is not tap drinkable, wasn't tap drinkable when those bills was accumulated. The water is currently running in all of our houses now. The governor was told that we could not uh, turn anybody waters off. So why don't we just go ahead and throw a couple more million, eleven more million dollars this year and eleven next year, and zero balance everybody water account just plug some of these holes that we keep annoying in the water fund. Mm -hmm. Put them, just plug them up with that money. Mm -hmm. Balance our, balance our budget a little bit, you know? Yeah. And cause I think we mighty close to the emergency manager. Okay. So with that being said, and you talking about that 40, uh, 47.5 or 45.7, I'm sorry. Um, that uh, that begs the question: it, How do you is the crisis still going on? Is it over? And once this money's dished out, everything's all good. How what what's the what in your opinion uh, the current status of the water crisis? As far as the water crisis go, and then you you're talking about the six hundred million dollars. No, I'm talking about is is everything fine and is the water drinkable or do you think or no is, is no 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 the water right, man it's, it's a, I'm looking at a tap right now. Mm -hmm. Um, when I went to Florida, the first thing I did was go to Kroger and buy me some bottled water. I ain't even want to drink out the taps in Florida. Mm -hmm. I visit my friends in um. Uh, in Flint Township, Beecher, Grand Blank, I asked for bottle of water. I don't drink out of the, I don't drink out of their sinks, and I'm not the only one that's that's like this. Mm. Okay, yeah, I, I hear you. You're you're cautious wherever you go, and that there's nothing wrong with that. And now, and, and that was made from not being able to drink the water out of your own sink for years. Yeah, seven years in county. So kind of along the same lines of safety, but kind of in a different lane, um, public safety. Uh, in your platform for your ward, what do you have? Uh, what are your plans for making your ward safer for its residents? Um, 
I have started a um, bi-monthly meeting, and some months I have went all four weeks, met four times, some even more, because I'll be just going live, so it's quite easy. But uh, as of November the 6th, we will be having a third war speaks. Matter of fact, it's November the 5th because I'm doing one on Friday and one on Saturday at uh, Grace Tabernacle Church on uh, Carpenter and Saginaw Street. Um, so Friday's at 12 and Saturday's at 6. And basically what that is, where I'm inviting the Third Ward and the Flint and the city of Flint to come up and voice their opinion about what what our needs are that needs to be addressed because it's a lot of people that will be able to make those uh friday and saturday's meetings uh by month by you know however many i have that don't make it to council meet that don't even really have never there's a lot of people in flint that have never went to a council meeting. Mm -hmm. it's a lot of people that don't even know what ward they living in mm -hmm. so that, that would be a chance, you know, to hopefully bring some kind of togetherness to where people will feel safer and these these kids maybe will change. Maybe some of us adults, instead of ignoring bad behavior, they're doing something because all these kids that just ain't out hanging by themselves, it's got to be an older person somewhere that may be ignoring it or allowing it or maybe even boosting it. Mm -hmm. I I don't I don't know, but maybe through these community meetings we can start reaching more more to more of those few. And I may I may I add this again, even though we do have a lot of crime, we do have a lot of killing. It's few. We got eighty thousand people. And it's and it's dropping because is you know, but we have good weeks to where we don't have murders. I really wanted to get to where we have months in a row without a murder in Flint. And agree. But far as just making our citizens feel safer and doing the right thing is uh we need to reach out to our energy. Um uh, I feel that we need to really hire those police officers instead of pump faking saying we can't hire nobody. Tighten up the reason why you can't hire nobody. And what I mean by that, let's just take that helicopter that they just spent 300000 on. Why couldn't they have took 100000 or maybe even 200000 Let's just say 100000 And Divided up, um, I think they say they're trying to hire 10. I think they should hire more, but that just whatever. We don't need to take the 200,000 because they need to hire way more than 10 police officers and put that over there and add that to these officers' pay and their benefits. Go towards their benefit, the ones that you already have before you lose them, tighten up their building benefits. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of our a lot of a, a lot of our uh, emergency workers, health emergency workers, are renters, and some of them are like living with people, and some of them have been paying their share for years. I feel we need to create a way to offer these people some homes and let them become homeowners and improve their quality of life. And and maybe we can set more goals for our younger people to where they would want to go into an apartment, do the right thing, and get them a home. Right. So along yeah. those lines and home owning, how do you feel blight is in the city? How What are some Terrible. things on your platform to combat Terrible. that and make these apartment complexes and homes, you know, look great again? Um. I um I try to uh, talk to people on subjects that we both 
kind of agree on. So when I have been talking to, I also talked to him about that zero balance. You know, we on totally two different, two different islands on that. But anyway, I talked to him about the the problem that we had, and this was while he was pushing this new garbage company on us. And I wasn't even checking him about pushing this new garbage company on it because I'm not a city councilman. That's not my place right now. My place is to do whatever I can for the city. So when I talk to him, I say, uh, why don't we do whatever it takes to get whatever we put on any curve in the city of Flint on that garbage day for one whole month picked up mm. and he agreed with me. He said, yeah, we, I, we, and then on another question I asked him was everything that we put on the curve going to get picked up on garbage day. And he said, yeah, I, I feel that's very important in the contract. It's, it's all in the word. You don't leave out land bank houses. You know, it, it's a reason why Flint looked like Flint and Grand Blank looked like Grand Blank. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely hear what you're saying. And, um, and, 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 then, and then I got another plus, and okay. I can't wait to the next council meet because one of the representatives from that trash company said that he was going to have a community meet. Now, when I talked to the mayor, I said, now, look, if you can get this established, I know the citizens can rally up and we can start pulling all that stuff up to the curb. And in a month's time, we can have our city beautiful. Yeah, that, and I, I, that's I, I really feasible. believe that. That's not, that's so, not, that, sounds, that sounds feasible. But we're, we're wrapping up on time here, so I hate to cut you off, but I want to try to get a, a two, uh, two more questions in before you get out of here. Okay. Um, do you know how many uh, registered voters are in your ward? Approximately uh, five. Uh, I think it's like four. I mean, ballpark. It's, it's, I mean, it doesn't about, have to about be about a thousand. About a thousand or two. Okay. And so you you are you should be well aware of this as uh, considering you're running but traditionally there's a typically a super low turnout when it comes to city council uh, elect, uh elections when it's specifically for city entities like city council um it's not a presidential year so expecting that low turnout what are you doing to help bring the residents out to vote for you this time begging them to vote <laughs> <laughs> I mean like Real talk. If I would have been on the ballot, I didn't even I, I, I don't really feel I really have the campaign. Hmm. Because I, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not lying because the people in the third ward know know what kind of a person I am. Okay. And so so I, I have I have no and, and believe me. The people that I'm running again know what kind of person I am because ask them why they won't never show up on the stage with. Me. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just, just being <laughs> honest. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, my last question or the last thing I'm going to have you do for us is I'm going to mm -hmm. have you look directly dead in the center of that camera and I'm going to have you tell us why we and your constituents should vote for you this coming election. Well, when you vote for me, you vote for somebody that's going to write the uh, resolution up to zero balance all your water accounts. And you, you're, uh, you're voting for somebody that's going to fight against the master plan and turn our green land back into land that we can build homes on. And I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get that tenant to home ownership program together. Um, no matter what happened at the election, um, the first and the third or Saturday of uh, the month meetings are going down. So the third ward will be heard no matter what. Um, uh, I'm just so happy that during this campaign, I was able to uh, help 50 people get their record expunged. So I already had a, you see, this one thing 
I went, I didn't go into, especially as a write in. I just yeah. couldn't go into it with one goal, and that was winning this election. So I have won the other four goals that I wanted to reach. So on November the 2nd, get your pens all right. R I C H A R D J O N E S and color in the box. Third Ward, let's get out. That's help Richard Jones make history. Write my name in. Thank you. All right. Well, Brother Jones, we appreciate you for taking the time to come out and talk with us and let us know a little bit about Let me be yourself. five and oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more about yourself. I your already platform. won four. I need one more win, baby. Then make that give me that five. Yeah, I hear get you. Five, yeah, a, a nice even five, right? <laughs> Okay. Well, again, sir, Mr. Jones, we appreciate your time for coming out to the show, letting us know what you're about and what you're doing. Viewers, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video so you can get a little more information about the people running for your, uh, to be your uh, next representative. Uh, this is Paul Jr. here on another episode of Meet the Candidates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We always appreciate that and to help get the word out. Um, and with that, everyone, have a good night. Peace. Hi, I'm Francis Gilcrest, president of the Flint Branch NAACP. I vote. Capture your future at Mott Community College. Hello, and welcome to Meet the Candidates, a show where we give residents an opportunity to learn more about candidates who are hopeful in representing them. My name is Candace Machat, and I'll be your host. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing third ward candidate Quincy Murphy. The time I would go to all of these different meetings, it just wasn't a lot of engaged residents, and they were making decisions that could affect our community. And then I was like, okay, you guys have been councilmen for years, and look how our community look, um, and it just started from there. So I ran against Johnny Tucker, the former um, beloved, rest in peace, Johnny Tucker. I ran against him first. Lost. and But I stayed in the community. And then I ran against Johnny Coleman. I lost. But I stayed working in the community. Ran against Brian Nolden. Lost. But I stayed in the community. Ran against Santino. Kerry Nelson lost but i stayed engaged in the community but every time i ran it, it taught me something it, it was some teachable moments some takeaway so my loss wasn't always a loss it was a it was teaching me something i learned something it allowed me the opportunity to see some things that i couldn't see had i not ran it allowed me to use running for office as a platform to talk about the issues so now I'm here today where the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to those who endure to the end. And I also understand that um, no one door closing and a loss ain't always a loss. It's preparing you for such a day as October 26th at 6.30 something where I'm able to talk about my past and the things that I went through to get me here, how God had prepared the table. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Flint has, and you've named quite a few people, right? And Flint has a rich history of activism, and we have a rich history of nationwide leadership. Uh, who, who's at least one person 
from Flint, uh, past or present, who inspires you to keep pushing daily? Um, Gregory Eason. Mm-hmm. Gregory Eason, um, my mother, um, my sister, my beloved sister, Sabrina, who passed away, mm-hmm. um, Leela McGee Harvey, um, Paul Heron. The list go on and on. Um, Lynn Williams from the Community Foundation. Isaiah Oliver. Uh, uh, I could just name so many. Um, the late um, Lenore Rowland. Vera B. Rising. Mm-hmm. Um, a lady named Roxy Price um, on that did this. She had a neighborhood house on Genesee Street. And I had got some tickets from Speed. And I couldn't afford to pay it, so I had to do community service. And I went over there, and I went on, it was on Avenue A in Saginaw Street. There used to be a house there with that little triangle area at. And um, I had to go and clean up, and I loved it. I fell in love with it. So it was um, the late um, James Dover. So the list go on and on of people who have inspired and got me where I am today. They were my team. They were my coaches. They were my life coaches. You know, my family, my friends, my neighbors, you know, the um, Jamie Gaskin over there at United, Margaret Cato. You know, there are so, um, Herb Winfrey, Woody Green, these people and I know that you could probably go on and on and on and keep naming people because again we we have a long history of just incredible activists and leadership um and and so I know that one thing about Flint Flint is a great place to make better right and so in all of those wonderful inspiring people that you named and and all the great things that we do have going for us in Flint right now what is something um that you would consider to be lacking in Flint um one of the biggest things is that I feel we don't, some of us don't understand what um, capacity building looks like. And when we picking a project or picking an issue and collaboration, and um, we got to work with all people versus just one person. So a, a lot of the work that I've done did not come because of Quincy. It came because of us working together. And I think the word us and we is lacking in the city of Flint. And one individual cannot do it alone. It has to be a collaborative effort. And we may not agree on certain things, but we need to come up with some commonalities and identifying those commonalities and sticking to that. And let's focus on what we have commonalities in and deal with it and that's what's lacking in the city of Flint it's always me myself and I or third ward fourth ward fifth ward sixth ward it's the city of Flint it's Genesee County right. and, and 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 I'm going to kind of move around from another oh. question because you actually led me into a, a completely different question when you talked about working together and how important that is um the current administration will have to work with you know whomever is uh, elected, right? Um, so what is your take on the relationship between the council and the current administration? Well, right now, I think um, you got cliques. You got the this clique versus the other clique. And one thing I've done is stay away from any clique and mm-hmm. us doing what's right. Um, I think the current administration came in with the former clique or supporters of Karen Weaver, instead of them saying the election is over with, let's work together. And it, it even happened with Karen Weaver. It even happened with Dan Wallen. So traditionally what happens is you got a certain group of council that support one person that's running for mayor than the other one. And then when they get in or whoever get in, if mayor Karen Weaver get in, then people who didn't want her, they fought against her. Um, I've seen that. Sheldon Neely got in. Those who didn't want him, they fought against him. So it's been a trend. So not specifically just talking about Sheldon Neely and his administration. It happened with Karen Weaver and her administration. It happened with Dane Wallen and his administration. It happened with Don Wilson and his administration. We have to accept the fact of the election results and move on. And I think the issue is we 
as council do not accept the fact that this is the person who's the mayor. Let's try to do our best by all means necessary to work with the uh, mayor and administration and they don't always get it right. Sheldon has not always got it right since he's been the mayor. The current Karen Weaver did not always get it right. The city council don't always get it right. Sometimes we have to accept the fact that we may not have got it right, but moving forward, how do we correct what we did wrong and make it right? So I think some self-evaluation need to happen with the mayor and administration and city council. They need to take responsibility that I may not be doing this right. So let me go back to the drawing table and see how can I make this better so that we can collectively work together. So I'm looking forward to trying to identify those areas of weaknesses on council, myself, and the mayor and administration. Just see how we can do the work together because the residents is tired of the countless meetings and not getting the business of the city of Flint done. And we want when people to come to want to invest in the city of Flint to look at us as a council that they want to work with us and not be so controversial and so stuck on he didn't we didn't agree. I, I'm quite sure um the Lord's will I get on um council, there are gonna be some things that Sheldon Neely and administration or whoever the mayor be coming up may do that I may not agree on, but I have to move on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part of the problem. Absolutely. It definitely takes a collaborative effort on all parts to help move a city forward. When we talk to when we here at Meet the Candidates talk to residents, we ask them what are some of their concerns uh, as far as uh, their wards are concerned. Things that come up are public safety, blight and economic development. And so we, we always talk about that kind of like as a whole of how to address those issues. But I'm just wondering specifically for your ward, do you have a plan to address public safety specifically? Do you have a, a plan to address blight specifically? And then uh, do you have a plan to address economic development as in attracting businesses specifically to the third ward? Which one you want me to take first? I, listen, whichever way you're more comfortable with. So like, I, I, I know that um, Flint knows you do quite a, a lot of work with blight. So go ahead and take that blight question first. Oh, I love that one. That's the best mm -hmm. one right there. I, I'm excited about the blight. Well, one thing about blight, um, there are a lot of non-structural blight in the third ward and other wards too. So what what non-structural blight is is along the fence lines. When they tear the house down along the fence lines in the back of the vacant lots, you got a lot of dead trees that done fell down. You got a lot of overgrown uh, weeds and grass. So what I'm um, projecting and proposing is to go in and gut out our community, go from one end of the block to the other end with bulldozers or, or you know, have some people come through um, and clean up the whole entire street, the block first. Just clean it up, get all the non-structural blight out, get the old fence line out that used to have the house and convert the vacant lots into green space. Once you do that right there, you're gonna come back with the clean and green program if you um familiar with the King Clayton and Green through Genesee County Land Bank, Renetta Speed don't have a good, excellent Clean and Green program that you can come back and pay the residents or the block clubs or the churches or the businesses in the neighborhood to maintain that. Because one thing you wanna do, you wanna give the residents a sense of belonging. So, um, probably for the last ten years I've been or five, I don't know how long. I just be quick counting now. But uh I've been maintaining vacant lots through the Clean and Green program. So I'll pay some youth in the neighborhood or adults, whoever is available. Mm -hmm. This year, um, my neighbor around the corner um, did the um, lots and the guy down the streets. We maintain uh, 60 vacant lots around the area where I live. And these are land bank houses. We do the decorative boarding where we board up the houses and put we paint them and make them look nice until we figure out what we're going to do with them. Rather, we tear them down or rehab them. So what I would like to see is the city of Flint come in and match the land bank funding for the clean and green because we know the clean and green works. Match state funding so if they do forty or fifty thousand dollars a year or ten thousand, twenty thousand, I don't know what their budget is um, for the clean and green program, but have the city of Flint use community development block grant dollars to match state funds to create the clean and green in the whole entire city of Flint 
where we have a maintenance team or some contractors or something that just come through and keep these um, vacant lots maintained every three weeks. But before we do that, we want to go in and gut these neighborhoods out and clean them up real good to make mm -hmm. it look like it wasn't even a house there and just make them look real nice and blend them in with the neighborhoods. So that's part of my plan for Blight. I can do a deep dive, but I don't think I have enough time. I, we, we are actually, and it's so crazy because talking to you um, and you, you sharing some of the hope that you have for becoming the third ward council person, time has actually gone by rather quickly. Uh, if, if you want to just, because I wanted to make sure that they are able to hear about, about uh, public safety and um, economic development, attracting some of that to your ward. So if you can just give us that really quickly. Okay. So um, crime. I feel that we do have to do crime prevention activity. I don't believe that we should police our way up out of crime. I don't think that the residents in crime is going to stop by us hiring. We need adequate police for the population that we serve in. So I'm in agreement with that. I'm, I'm in agreement with making sure that we have adequate police. So I want to make sure we have that. If we don't, I want to make sure we have that first on, on just the surface. But I think we need to create cr um, crime prevention activities, things for people. Uh, idle mind is the devil's workshop. So I'm interested in crime prevention activities. What do that look like? Jobs, having something for them to do. So that's part of my plan for crime. For economic development, I'm following the Racer um, project over there at the old Buick City site. That's one of the big industrial sites that kind of go through the in third ward. So I'm looking at that right there. If we can get that developed, that'll bring some jobs. So that'll be the hub of part of the economic development. And I'm looking at the mom and pop stores that don't um, get funding. Those are two of my priorities for economic development in the third ward. So when we talk about, and that, that sounds amazing, so when we talk about like your economic development plan, your blight plan, and your public safety plan, specifically for the third ward, if we had to use this based on the last television show that you watched, who would be coming along to help you get those three plans into action? Hold on, repeat that question again. You Based on the last television show that you watched, right? And we want to address all three of those plans that you have. Who would be coming to help you get those plans in, in motion? What was the last TV you watched? Florida from Good Times. Okay, so Florida Evans would be coming up here to help you uh, get Whiplet in the shape. And I can see Florida doing that. So, sounds hey, like we be. Hey. First, she's going to be like, damn, damn, damn. <laughs> I wanted to do it, so I'm glad you did it because I really wanted to do it. So I had to stop myself. Okay, uh, we are winding down on time. So do me a favor, look in the camera and tell the third ward residents why they should vote for you. Third ward residents, you should vote for me because I don't discriminate against white folks. I'm for all people. I don't discriminate against the LGBT community. I feel you have a right to have a seat at the table. I feel like I have a plan. I've talked about it. You guys have seen some of my literature. It talked about my plan. It talked about my vision. It talked about my mission. It talked about my priorities. I want, I'm want. i served on the Charter Commission, so I already know what government looks like, how it should be functioning downtown. I'm not controversial. I'm not brought and sold by no, no one. I don't sell drugs. That's just a political motive that they um, took a quote that I said something I did 25 years ago, and that's the best strategy or plan or political ploy that they can use. I would have never ran for office if I was out there selling drugs. That's absolutely not me. Don't believe the hype. Let's bring somebody down there that's going to work with the mayor and administration, work with the city council that has solution, has a proven track record. Go to Dewey Park, look at all the work that I'm doing in Dewey Park. I have work that show for it speaks for itself. You can touch and feel my work. I'm not just talking about it. I am about it. And I'm a person that want to go down there and get the work done. And I want to go down there with all that controversy. And it's a big difference between me and my opponent who I'm running against. So if you want that controversy, you vote for A.C. Domus. If you want somebody that's going to go down there and roll up their sleeves and get the work done and be a man of his word and tell you the truth and come and help you that know how to write grants, vote for Quincy Murphy.
All right, well, there you have it. Third Ward candidate, Quincy Murphy. Thank you for joining us on Meet the Candidate. Good luck in your race. Thank you.